Good afternoon. Thank you for tuning into our radio program today. This is Love for the Truth, put on by the Davison Church of Christ. We are located right in Davison on Lapeer Road, next to Lucky Steakhouse. If you're looking for a sound congregation who teaches only biblical truth and is seeking to do the will of Jesus Christ, we are your congregation. We would love to have any visitors if you are looking for a church on Sundays or Wednesday night. We would love to have have you come check us out and see what we believe and teach. I believe you'll find that we hold to the biblical pattern as, as closely as we possibly can. So feel free. Um, and Also, check out our website. It's uh, www.davisonchurchofchrist.com. It's davisonchurchofchrist.com. And we have uh, lots of video lessons and uh, some material that you can check out there. If you have any questions, dial our phone number is 810-652-0706. That's 810-652-0706. Uh, today's lesson I want to go over on this radio program is titled, King Uzziah's Great Pride and Fall. The text is Second uh, Chronicles chapter 26. And this, this isn't a super well-known story, but um, when you start studying through the kings, this is a pretty important lesson for us to learn. It, it is, it's often quoted that pride goes before the fall. Right? We've all heard that. And we know that that's a very true statement. That famous phrase actually comes from Proverbs 16 and verse 18. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. This means that when we become prideful or, or you know, great in our own eyes, when we become so filled with our self-accomplishments and the great things that we've done, the tendency is that this arrogant spirit will lead to your downfall. And I think uh, humanity has seen this time and time again set into play that they've seen that this is exactly right. 1 Peter 5 Verses 5 through 6 says, God resists the proud. Right? Those who are arrogant and are high up on themselves have, has the big head. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. The Bible teaches that the proud will not stand in the eyes of God, right? But they will certainly fall. When, when we raise ourselves up and put ourselves on a pedestal, God is ready to bring us down low. But if you do it the other way around, if you will lower yourself and always give God the praise and give God the glory for your blessings and your accomplishments and your success, don't get the big head. Then the Bible teaches that the Lord, if you lower yourself, the Lord will raise you up. James 4.10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. We're going to take a look at an Old Testament character uh, in this lesson whose pride led to his destruction. That's exactly what the theme of this is. His name is King Uzziah of Judah. Second Chronicles chapter 26 and verse 1 says, Now all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king instead of his father uh, Amaziah. Verse 3 says, Isaiah was 16 years old when he became king, and he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. So he started reigning at 16 years old. Verse 4 says, And Isaiah did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah had done. So he started off very well, we're going to see. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord. He sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord... God made him prosper. That's a good lesson right there. As long as God or as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. The next big section of that chapter in verses uh, 6 to verse 15 lists all of the great things and accomplishments that King Isaiah did as the king over Judah. Verse 6 tells us that he made great victories in war over the Philistines and over the people of Ashdod. He broke down walls, built cities for the people of God. Verse 7 says, God helped him against the Philistines, against the Arabians, and against the Munites. So King Isaiah was, was prospering, right? And in that section, he also built great towers in Jerusalem and in the desert. He dug wells. He had great success in agriculture and farming. 
He made great weapons of war for the people of God. Verse 15 says his fame spread far and wide. And the list is long of all that was written about King Isaiah's success over Judah. But I want you to remember back to verse 5 that we looked at just a bit ago. And it says, as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. You see, what ends up happening with this king is that he had been seeking the Lord, but eventually he was lifted up with pride and it led to his destruction. Right? He got the big head for all of his great accomplishments that he had performed. I know we can learn a lesson from this. Right? We, we, we will have success in our lives, but we need to learn not to follow in the path of the, the prideful and what Isaiah is doing here. So he forgot that it was God who had helped him to win all of these battles of war in the first place, right? Remember verse 7 said God helped him against the Philistines, against the Arabians, against the Munites. So it was God who had given him success and caused him to prosper in the first place. So as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. Also look at the tail end of verse 15. It says, so his fame spread far and wide for he was marvelously helped until he became strong, right? King Isaiah was marvelously helped by the Lord so that he became a very mighty king indeed, right? Sometimes God does that in our lives. He he allows us to prosper. He he allows us to uh, get a better job. He'll allow us to work to the top of our job, and we're prospering. We're doing well, but, you know, there are many, many lessons that we can learn from the tail end of this chapter, Verses, 20, verses 16 through 21, it says, But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. Right? Remember Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And the verse says, For he transgressed against the Lord his God by entering the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Now pause just for a moment. I want you to uh, get the picture here. Here, King Uzziah decides that he is going to enter into the kingdom or to the temple of God. He's going to go into the temple and he's going to burn incense on the altar of incense. Now, you might be wondering, well, what's wrong with that? What's the big deal about Uzziah, the king of Judah, entering into the temple to burn incense? You know, Uzziah must have been thinking the same thing. He he must have had this attitude: I'm so powerful in this land. I'm the king. I'm so important to this nation. Certainly, I have the power to go into the temple and offer incense, of course. But you see, no, he did not have that authority. He did not have that power. His pride led to his destruction because God had specified in Numbers chapter 18, verse 6, that only the Levites could perform the work of the temple. And he was not a Levite. He thinks, I can go in there. Verse uh, 17 says, So Azariah the priest went in after him, and with him were eighty priests of the Lord, valiant men. And they withstood King Uzziah and said to him, It is not for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord, but for the priests, the sons of Aaron, who are consecrated to burn incense. Get out of the sanctuary, for you have trespassed. You have gone against God's law. You have no honor from the Lord God. So here's the point. Isaiah thought he had the right to be there. Who had God specified needed to be burning the the incense? It was the Levites. And Isaiah, I'm the king. I can be in there. Verse 19 says, Then Isaiah became furious, and he had a censer in his hand to burn incense. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it anyway. And while he was angry with the priests, what happened? Leprosy broke out on his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord, beside the incense altar. And Isaiah, the chief priest, and all the priests looked at him, and there on his forehead he was leprous. So they thrust him out of that place. Indeed, he also hurried to get out because the Lord had struck him. Verse 21 says, King Isaiah was a leper until the day of his death. He dwelt in an isolated house because he was a leper, for he was cut off from the house of the Lord. Then Jotham, his son, uh, was over the king's house, judging the people of the land. So what do we see in this story? The King Isaiah got the big head, didn't, didn't he? He let his accomplishments and his blessings, all of this that he was prospering his, as king, he let this 
convince him that he was great. Right, I've, I've been doing so many good things and I'm, pr- I'm prospering. Look how successful I am. So great that he decided to transgress against the law of the Lord and do something that God did not authorize. You know, did you know that this, this really is the same attitude we see in many churches today? People who think that they have every right in the world to go against God's authority for worship. And, and if you confront them about it, they get upset like Isaiah did, right? The, the priest came to Isaiah and they said, you, you can't be in here. This goes against the authority of God. Right, and because because God had specified it is the the work of the Levites, right, and so that's the exact same thing we see today. Is people say you you don't don't tell me that I can't worship God the way I want. Don't tell me that I can't bring this into worship or that into worship. That we can't, uh, you know, have a big old praise band in here and bring all these musical instruments and lights and camera and fog machines. Right, God didn't ask for that. All, all I ask is, did God say you could do that? You know, just like Isaiah, people take their uh, the authority into their own hands and say, here's what I'm going to do in the worship. I'm going to bring this into the worship. I'm going to bring that into the worship. But God never authorized it in the first place. right? Don't you tell me that women can't take the leadership roles in the church. Well, did God say you could do that? Right, so many people are being influenced by society, right? And um, society is saying, well, you know, women get the jobs just like the men. W- women get to do this just like the men. And that's fine. That's okay. But when, you, when it comes to the worship of God's people, we can't be going against God's authority and sticking women in the leadership roles and the speaking roles when the New Testament has told us that women are to remain silent in the church. You tell people, you can't baptize babies. Well, did God, you know, no, people, people say, you can't tell me I can't baptize a baby. And God, they say, well, did God say that we could do that? And we know certainly the answer is God did not say you could do that. You know, people are, are bringing in practices that God never brought in. Why baptize a baby? A baby has no sin. And so we, we see people bringing in left and right all of these different practices because they're going against God's authority. Many times the reason for that is because we get prideful. And we think, you know, I have every right in the world to bring this in, into my doctrine. I can teach what I want to teach. I can practice what I want to practice because that's my right. Well, you see, we can't go against the authority of God and we, we, we can't be so puffed up as to change God's word, right? We were told several times over that we are not to add to or take away from what God has said. Don't, don't be adding to the, to the traditions, but keep the traditions which were passed down um, from Scripture themselves. Right? So th- there's many applications that we could take from this Old Testament story. But I think the theme is pretty simple. Humble yourself before God. Give him the glory and know your place in this world because you just need, you need to follow his laws and you'll do fine. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 8 says, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. 1 Corinthians 10, 12 says, Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Right? We don't need to be um, getting so puffed up about ourselves that we, that we think we are something. Let us walk in accordance with God's word and not be arrogant. Thank you so much for your kind attention today. If you have any questions, feel free to call the Davison Church of Christ or go to our website. Our phone number is 810-652-0706. Thank you and have a great day.